Alright guys, it's Stephen here in another video and I want to talk about something pretty exciting. I was sat browsing the internet last night like the rest of us when something popped up. Manchester City under 15s 9, Manchester United under 15s nil. 9 nil in the derby at the under 15s level. Now that is pretty special. Being United at any level is always satisfying, but by that margin, that is an absolutely most mullering. It's always embarrassing at times, and uh, you almost feel sorry for the United kids on the other side of that. But the best thing about this is it isn't even a rarity. The under 14s beat them 6 nil. The under 13s beat them 5 nil. We're beating them at the derby at every single level. The under 11s even put 20 past Preston North End the other week. Now add this to the fact that our under 18s are currently top of the table, unbeaten, having won eight and drawn two. Uh, then obviously the likes of Sancho, Foden, Lassie Baudier, uh, Anderson, Baveda. These are all contributing to England's under 17s team who beat Germany 8 1. And then the fact that we're top of the under 23 table with a team mainly made up of uh, last year's under 18s. We're top there as well. Well, we're just top of everything and we're winning constantly by great margins at academy level. This is very, very encouraging. Uh, look at the under 50s last night, the likes of Luis Fiorini, a very gifted attacking fielder he grabbed two uh taylor bellis a young center back grabbed a hat trick in the first half a center back i'm sure pep guardiola is going to be liking him in a few years time if he's got anything uh if he will if his goal scoring attributes show anything about his technique and then tommy doyle mike doyle's grandson the mike doyle he had five assists Five assists from midfield. He's apparently one of the most gifted young players of his age group anywhere in the world, as is the likes of James McAtee, an exceptionally gifted attacking midfielder as well. It's just full of wonderful talent. So is the under-18s. So is the under-23s. And obviously this season as well, we've already seen Guardiola has done more for our youth team products at Pellegrini did in a few years, in my humble opinion. The likes of Maffeo, 180 minutes. Alex Garcia, more than that. Adam Rabaio's made his uh, made a couple of appearances this season. Brahim Diaz has made his debut. Angus Gunn has been promoted to the first team as well. And that's just the start of things to come, in my humble opinion. We've seen the likes of Nalo on loan, uh, Selena doing very good things. And it's very, very encouraging. The under 23s, too, they are top of the league despite not having a recognised striker for the past few months, uh, past few weeks, even. Uh, it's been Brahim Diaz up top because the mate has been injured. Uh, in my opinion, one of uh, the best young uh, English forwards around, an absolute poacher, a wonderful finisher. But now uh, Ambrose is back, uh, the mate is back. So we're getting he's a fuller strength squad at the under 23 level, and we're still top of the league. One most encouraging for me is Dendal Bozu, one of my favourite players. Bodu uh, is excellent. He reminded me a little bit about a year and a half ago of a young Ross Barkley. Direct, powerful, elegant, also very intelligent. He was a big part of the under-18s team a couple of years back that reached the final. But sadly for him, he had lots of injuries and a bit of bad luck, but he's back in training now as well. So the options are plentiful. The under-18s team, they've been training this week once again with Guardiola. We've seen the likes of Sancho there hugging Guardiola. Lati Baudier was with him as well. Phil Foden has been stepping up and it's just very, very encouraging. A lot of people probably we will say with some justification it doesn't really mean anything unless they get first team uh, football but this is where I disagree with most of the football fans this is actually going to happen the seeds have been sown for a very long time this is why people like Soriano uh, said in a few years time we want to have a first team built up of mainly homegrown players a lot of people sniggered at that but it is actually going to happen you don't put that much money and that much investment into an academy product like Manchester City's then not do anything about it these players, this club, they mean business. They fully well intend to follow through on this promise, this money, this investment. And it's already starting to show dividends. We are taking teams apart at youth level. Not by one goal, two, three. By six, seven, eight sometimes. It is fascinating. The under-18s this season beat Liverpool by seven goals. The likes of Ian Carlo Paveda, an exceptionally gifted young player. Winger, go this way and that way. Sancho, he reminds me of Neymar, cutting in from the wing. Great feet, impossible, possibly good finishing. Tricky assists. Uh, then and Lati Baudier, ball playing centre half. Kurt Anderson, he's not really under 18s yet, but he's already in England under 17s, first choice goalkeeper. And then Phil Foden, a little Stockport Iniesta. That's the best way I can describe him. He can go this way, that way. Incredibly tough, feisty, darty, glides from midfield. He's just a Guardiola kind of player. And the best thing about it, all these young players are learning from the very, very best in the game. He's going to be so showing his ways. It's going to trickle down, and some of these are going to train with him first time. It's very, very encouraging. I just love the fact that we put in so much money into all these local lads, all these players, all these gifted products. And I think we could see players in the first team pretty soon. I just want to talk about, about that a little bit because I think we we're on to something here. This is the tip of the iceberg. We're going to see uh, these players break through in the first team in a few years and it's going to be absolutely marvellous. But yeah, the under 15s, 9-0. It may only be the under 15s, but that feels pretty sweet and that is worth taking note of because this is just the start of things to come. Anyway, guys, I want to talk about that a little bit on the vlog. Let me know what you think about the Academy coverage in general. Do you want to see more of this stuff? I know you've seen the match day vlogs and you've seen me doing the, uh, the Bellerin and Sanchez video the other day, but I'm going to try a few various things. But anyway, guys, if you like this and you want to see more of this kind of stuff, subscribe. It will mean a lot. Anyway, guys, until next time.